I will show you the techniques and strategies you can use to solve championship Sudoku faster, including one trick involving the green cell that will reduce your solve time the most. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look up in block one. You'll see you have there's twos here in columns two and three. And this two, the only place two can go in block one are these two spots. This is called Snyder notation, and you'll want to use it in Championship Doku. Anytime a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate market. In case you solve one cell, you can solve the other right away. And it's named after a world champion Sudoku, Thomas Snyder. Let's look here in block five. Where can the threes go? You got these two threes. You'll limit these two spots. So we'll mark the threes. And then in the block four, so look where the fours go. You got this four cutting across here. You got this four coming down. And so the fours are a pointing pair. And this is going to be very important. Why a pointing pair? What that means is since a four has to be in block four and it's limited to column one, a four cannot be anywhere else outside of the block in that column. So you can't have a four here or here. That'll be very important a little bit later on. And what it does is it restricts the fours now to these two cells in block seven. Greetings, friend. If you are new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Let's look here for the fives. Get these two fives, put Snyder fives here in block four. And then with this five and this five, we have Snyder fives here in block three. These aren't pointing, but they still only have two possibilities. They'll be helpful for us here in just a minute. All right, sixes. You got this six here and this six here. Two possibilities for a six. And then we can actually make a solve now with these sevens. You see there's two sevens here and this seven here in row two. Only place four seven in block three is right there. And now with the sevens, let's move on here. You got these two sevens. One or two possibilities for a seven in block four. And a little tip, if you're doing this with pencil, you can just write a little seven right here in between both of those. And then you can write the cell as you go. I saw this by Tan Tan Dai, the current world Sudoku champion. And you can do the same thing with little naked pairs. You can write the two digits right in the middle here between the line when you're writing. And you never have to erase them. You can just mark the cell as normal whenever you figure out which digit goes in which cell. Very cool. All right, so look else we can do with the sevens. In block eight, you got these two sevens, so nine or sevens right there. And then let's look at the eights. You have this eight and this eight. So the eights are limited. These two cells in block nine, and so they're a pointing pair as well. So now the eights can't be in these cells. You have this eight here. The eights are limited right there. All right, so the eight might be, it's one of the possibilities for that green cell. Let's see if it is. The green cell value. Okay, look up here in block one, and we got something cool going on. See how the eights in rows one and three here? In blocks two and three. So the eights are limited here now to column two and, excuse me, column two and one in block one. And they're also limited to column two and one here in block seven. And you see this situation. And you mark the Snyder and go, okay, it's in the same columns. That means that an eight has to be in this column in block four, right? Because eight's gonna be here and here, or here and here. And it's called a mini X-wing. And what you can do right away is you look over here and go, okay, if there's three available candidates or three available cells, this would be a claiming triple. If there's only two, it'd be a claiming pair. But since there's only one cell, this is actually a hidden single. We can solve this eight. And if you notice this type of pattern, you can solve pretty quickly. The other way, to do that would be to go, okay, I'm looking down column and I notice the pointing pair eights here, I notice this eight here, I notice this eight here, so the eights can't be in these three cells. That's a little bit harder to find versus this nice little mini X-wing. But we can do some more solving here and what it's gonna save us time is now the eight right there to go with these two eights, we can solve this for an eight. Instead of, if we didn't have that eight, you'd be marking Snyder eights right here, but now we can solve those two for an eight. And then with this eight, we can solve for an eight right here. Nice, and we're gonna displace the Snyder and solve for an eight down there. You see how quickly we made all those solves because we found that mini X-wing? This is gonna really reduce your solve time. Let's look now, because of what we just solved here, 
you have this two cutting across, you have a pointing pair of twos. Like, okay, what's the big deal? Well, now twos can't be in any of these three cells. You have this two right here. We can actually make a solve for a two. Nice. And then with these twos, we can put Snyder twos up here in block three. And then with these twos here, we can actually make a solve for a two in block eight. And that's going to reduce our twos to these two cells in block five. Okay, let's look where the nines can go. We haven't done anything with the nines yet. We got this nine coming down. You have this nine cutting across, and you got two possibilities for nine right there. At this point of the solve, you want to go to the places of greatest restriction. There's not much else we can look for with Snyder notation. And so the greatest restriction you can see here is right across row seven. You have six digits for that, a two, three, five, six, seven, and a nine. So we need a one, four, and an eight. And you think, okay, I got an eight in the block, so that's a one or a four. You look here, you see, I, I see a four, so that's gotta be a one or eight. And then you might think this could be a one, four, or eight. But remember, there's two ways that we can reduce this further. First of all, you might notice you have these fours right here. When the Snyder notation is not in the cell that you just marked, you know this can't be a four. So you can look at this as like a claiming pair and go, that can't be a four. Other way you can notice it is that you made these pointing pair fours. So you look up and you see, oh, I got a four pointing down. This cannot be a four. And so what you end up with is a one eight naked pair, which means the one eight has to be in these two cells. And so this cell cannot contain a one because naked pairs act as pointing pairs. It's the only place left where we can put a or now. And you can use strategies like these to solve my exclusive reward puzzle packs. Join the Smarty Party by clicking on the pinned comment. You can get my March puzzle pack created by special guest Iotato. You send me the correct solution, I'll give you a shout out at the end of the month, just like all of Phoebe, Aaron Wells, Carol Emmerich, and Yoshi Broshi, who all solve February's puzzle pack. And after solving this, you want to see what does that give us? Well, you'll notice now the fours can't be here. So we actually have a, our old friend, the pointing pair, right? The fours are now restricted to row four here in block six. And since they're a pointing pair, four can't be anywhere else along the row. So we can displace that Snyder four, solve this four, displace in the Snyder seven, displace in the Snyder five. Wow, I mean, all those solves that quickly because we noticed this pointing pair claiming pair situation. And now we need a nine and a six. So I got my nine right here, I'm gonna pull it over. From block six, so that's our nine, and that's our six. And now let's look where we can put a six down here in block seven. Because you have six right here, this place is that Snyder six, we can solve for a six in block seven. And then with this six and this six right here, you have two possibilities for a six. And so now those are a pointing pair of sixes. Give me a thumbs up if you saw this pointing pair of sixes, because this is going to help us out. This pointing pair with this six means sixes can't be in these two spots. And then with these two sixes we just saw, they can't be here. So we can solve for six and block six now. It has to be right there. Now let's turn our back to block seven. Okay, you see we have the one eight here. You got this nine coming down. Nine can't be there. So nine is restricted to these two cells. And this is another key tip. Whenever you have Snyder notation on top of themselves, so these two did this to four and nine on top of each other, that is a hidden pair. What it's saying is four and nine are only restricted to the same two cells in block seven and also in column three. And so no other candidate can be there. And so we can just mark that as a four and nine hidden pair. And I'll remove those marks, which means we can solve this cell for a seven. And you come up here, the only digit missing from column three is also a seven all right after this where's the next greatest restriction let's look over here in column seven you got six digits here we're missing a one two and a four well, i got my one right there so one can't be there this has to be a one displacing that snyder four nice and then we see here we have a two and a five left well i got my five in block four so that's gotta be your five displacing the snyder two and so we end up here is a two four naked pair to finish column seven and we made a lot of great solves there and then we can look up here in block three since you have this five this places that snyder five we can solve this cell for a five placing that snyder six 
And the only digit left up here in block three is a three. And I don't see a three in column eight, so that's gotta be a three. And now we have a one, nine, naked pair. Okay, we're getting to the spot where we're about to solve this green cell. Let's look at block five now. Can we do some more solving here? And we sure can. Here you come across this situation, you have a full house. Eight cells filled out. There's only one missing. We know for certain we can solve this for a five. Check out this tutorial to learn more about solving single cells. Then you go here and say, oh, that can't be a two anymore. So we can solve this for a two. Another full house means this has to be a nine. So now we have a nice one, three naked pair. You can check out these two fives and this five and solve for a five right here. And you can see this seven eliminates that seven we solve for seven right here. And now I'm going to show you my neat right angle trick. You want to notice here is we're going to be able to solve our green cell by focusing on what's right here and what's right here. This is really cool. What can be left in row three? It's going to be a one or three, right? Well, you see you have a one and three right here. So that is a naked pair. It's a naked pair of a one and a three. And so it restricts the one and three, those two cells in column six. What else are we missing is a four, six, and nine. Okay, well, you have these two sixes and this six. We can solve for a six right there. And so now with this six and nine, this has to be your four. And with this six right here, you know, that's going to be your six and that's going to be your nine. And you're like, okay, Tim, like, how are we going to make this big saw that you're talking about? Well, now because of this three, three has to be right here, which means this has to be a one. And now here we go. Right angle, three, one, three, one, boom. We can solve our green cell, four and eight. See how that works? When you find these nice, Naked pairs, hidden pairs, pointing pairs, you can make these kind of solves and you clean up the grid so quickly. And now you can displace that Snyder 8 and put the 8 right there as soon as I get out of color mode. And then what we see is I didn't mean to remove the 2 from there yet. What we got up here is looks like a 1 and a 4. I got my 4 right there. I'm going to pull it up. So there's your 4, there's your 1. All right, here, here's your two, here's your four. This has to be your two. This is gonna leave us with a three in the corner. Nice, nice. And then we have a nine up there. So let's finish up the rest of this puzzle. With this four, we can disambiguate the nine, the four down here. And then with this nine, we can disambiguate the one. And our last digit is a nine. Solve Sudoku faster with more tips from this next video. I wanna thank you so much for watching.